If you were to look at Jaleesa Arce's life, you might think she has had it all. She climbed the ranks of Wall Street's most elite bank, Goldman Sachs, making over 300 grand a year as a vice president. But she did it all, get this, as an undocumented immigrant. Jaleesa Arce is here to tell us her story. She is now the director of development at Define America, a nonprofit that helps women and men just like her, undocumented immigrants, and our own Bloomberg News superstar who wrote a piece about her for Bloomberg Business Week, Max Abelson, one of my faves, Jaleesa. We've had the chance to read this extraordinary story. If you haven't out there, get yourself business. We get on the terminal and read it. But tell us, give us the history. Well, I came here when I was 11. Um, and I came here originally on a tourist visa. And my visa expired. And because I used a tourist visa to come live here, getting a new one was likely to be impossible. And that wasn't a risk that my parents wanted to take to be separated from me. So I became undocumented when I was 14. Um, Texas passed a law in 2001 that allowed me to go to college, and I graduated from the University of Texas at Austin in 2005. And I but had even though offer. Texas said you could go to college, could you work? No. But did so they, you could go to know, college did, but so not pay tuition and not be afford to eat? Did the state eat? give you some sort of temporary uh, documentation to go to no. college? No. So they agreed to let you go to college even though they knew you were illegally in the country? Yes. Did they give you a scholarship? No. I did get, I did get a private scholarship. But I did not get financial aid. So even though the law allows undocumented students to go to college and pay in-state tuition, it does not allow um, it does not allow us to receive financial aid. How do you go from college to Goldman? I had an internship at Goldman in 2004 through a program called Sponsors for Educational Opportunities (SEO), um, and I did well during the internship. And so I was asked to come back full time. Um, and when I got this job offer. I was faced with a really difficult decision. My choices were to give up on my future, and then the sacrifices my parents made and the sacrifices that I made would seem pointless, or my other choice was to break the law and use fake papers. It's such a gray area, though, isn't it? Because the state of Texas knows, in fact, it allows you to go to college in the state, so it knows that you're there. It's not, they're not doing anything about it. So they sort of tacitly uh, allow you to be in this country. Um, why doesn't Washington make steps to, to change this to make it legal, since states already know what's happening and, and don't do anything about it? That is a great question, and one I ask myself all the time. I was going to ask Max. Um, <laughs> Okay, so hold on a second. You intern at Goldman. Now it's time to get a full-time job. I used to work at a bank. I remember they do background checks. I can remember stressing over those a little bit. You had to be worried, how am I going to possibly get through this with a fake Social Security number? Oh, I was absolutely terrified. Um, it was really, really scary filling out those documents and knowing that I could get found out at any minute. And But what happened? They didn't actually check? No, I, I, they definitely checked. It's, I think, you know, I'm not an expert on this, but I believe that what a background check checks for is a criminal record, which I don't have. Um, and it's now, <laughs> um, have one. and I think, Max, you know this better than I do, um, that Goldman now follows a different process right. than it did before. No, that's exactly right. Max, how did you find the, I mean, this is an extraordinary story. This is what movies are made about. And I just love the fact that it's a Goldman of all places. How did you find this? Uh, you know, sometimes stories take a really long time. Uh, Julissa and I talked, it was like more than a year ago, right? Yeah. For a story that I wrote uh, that, that, that's out there about um, young people on Wall Street and non who had their own nonprofits who are really engaged in nonprofits, yeah. uh, as, as Julissa is, with a, a, a SEND fund. Yeah. And it was only a few uh, weeks or maybe a couple months ago now where she emailed me, right? And she said, hi, Max, you may remember me. There is something I didn't tell you when we talked last time. And I found out about her story, and we took it from there. So why is, I mean, this is a great story, and I recommend everyone go to Bloomberg.com to check it out. Beyond this, the actual story of Julissa, I'm sure you've looked into the immigration question on the whole. Um, the state of Texas you know, tacitly allows immigrants to be there and operate in, in our system. The state of New York does the same thing. Um, the titans of business at the top of the labor period, pyramid want immigrants to do these jobs. At the bottom of the labor py pyramid, we want immigrants to do these jobs. The country was built on immigration. What's, question, what's question. stopping us? 
Well, first of all, don't be, uh, don't get confused about Texas because although Rick Perry signed into law uh, a state bill that allowed undocumented immigrants to go to the University of Texas at in-state tuitions, um, thus allowing Julissa, right, you could go to college because of that, Rick Perry also stood up on a stage just a couple weeks ago and said, if the U.S. doesn't secure the border, Texas will. So there, there's a lot of mixed things going on now. There, it, it's not as if Texas is incredibly eager to welcome um, and undocumented immigrants. And by the way, there is, um, there is a big opportunity position to this House Bill 1403 that was what allowed me to go to college. And Greg Abbott, the new Texas governor, has said that he will veto that law. So it, that law right now is at risk, and there, there are thousands and thousands of students who may not be able to finish their college education if this law is repealed. How did Goldman Sachs find out? Find out? That you were undocumented. They did not. No, she, became, she got married and got her green card. That's right. Oh, I, yeah, there you I go. read the whole story. I got it. <laughs> yeah. So you got married. At, at any point while you were working there, the pressure, the stress, the secrecy of it, the fact that you lost that your father, who was living in Mexico, and you couldn't fly to go see him, and you had a super high-pressure job, you didn't think you wanted to tell anybody? No, I absolutely wanted to tell someone. But the reason I didn't was for two reasons. One, I think there is this, there is this stigma that what I did was wrong and that what I, it, that what I did was shameful. Right? And I was embarrassed by it. So I didn't, I didn't even tell my closest friends. I remember once my friends took a trip to Mexico on a vacation. And they were like, you should come. You need to come with us. This will be so much fun. Mm -hmm. And I said, I can't. I have to work. And like, you're such a workaholic. Take a break. But I couldn't go because I couldn't leave the country. Right? I want to I want to I want to quickly uh, read a statement because Goldman Sachs actually did respond uh, to the story. Lloyd Blankfein uh, said, wouldn't it be great if we could give a home to more of the talented young people who come to this country for an education and want to apply their energy That's uh, and skills to supporting our economy? And frankly, it makes sense if we're educating people in this country, why would we make them leave after we give them the best education in the world? Hold on. That's pretty extraordinary, the statement from Lloyd. Did you ever meet him? Do you know him? I heard him speak a couple of times, but I never, I, mean, I never met him in person. I never had um, a conversation with him, but I was so humbled by his statement, um, and I was really shocked. We are humbled by you. Thank you so much Thank for joining so us. Thank you so much for Arce, and the man who wrote the story, our own Max Abelson.